Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we'll be looking at the cooling system. Well, when it comes to the purpose of the cooling system, there are different functions of the cooling system, but the main one is to remove excess heat that is generated as a byproduct of combustion. When fuel and air mixture is combusted inside the cylinder, extremely high temperature will be produced inside the cylinder. That will lead to engine components overheating if it is not regulated. So the main function of the cooling system is to remove excess heat. By removing excess heat, we will prevent metal parts from expanding too much and leading to engine seizure. And also, if excess temperature is available inside the cylinders in the engine, that will cause lubricating oil to be denatured. So in order to have long service life, the engine operating temperature has to be maintained. So that is the main function of the cooling system, maintaining the engine operating temperature. Well, there are also other functions of the cooling system. For example, the cooling system allows the vehicle to attain the operating temperature as fast as possible. For example, if the engine is being driven in a very cold environment, attaining the normal operating temperature will be challenging. So the cooling system, by warming up the engine, will allow the engine to attain its normal operating temperature as fast as possible. Later in this video, we will look at how that is achieved. The other function of the cooling system is to provide heat when required to the cabin. Well, cooling water will be directed to the heater core, and when wind blows over the heater core, warm air will be admitted into the passenger's compartment. So that is another function of the cooling system. Well, when it comes to the different types of the cooling system, depending on the coolant used, we can classify them as air-cooled and water-cooled. Air-cooled configuration is usually used on engines where there are no complications required. For example, on a simple and lighter engines, small engines, air-cooled is used. But when it comes to Water cooled, as you can see, there are additional components like the radiator, like the cooling fan, and uh, water, comp water pump, hoses, and other related components that will make it bulky. So when small and uh, very light cooling is required, engines usually get used to the air cooling system. But when we come to most of the cooling systems that is being used in automobile engines, we have the water-cooled or the liquid-cooled system. Well, besides adding weight to the design and uh, making it as it, the design a little complicated, cooling system of a liquid-cooled system has also as a disadvantage. For example, as you can see here, there is a probability of being affected by rust and corrosion. Well, when it comes to air-cooled, there is no such kind of problem. The main advantage of the water-cooled system is that water has a high heat capacity than air and can remove heat quickly away from the engine than a comparable sized air cooling system. Now let us see some of the components of the cooling system and see what their function is. We will be looking at the components one by one. Let's begin from the radiator. The radiator is a heat exchanger. When coolant passes through, there is an internal passage that allows coolant to go through. For example, this one is a vertical flow type cooling system radiator. So water will be flowing down in these tubes. There are tubes that are covered by fins. These are fins. The fins are here to increase the surface area of the radiator. And when wind blows, when wind blows through the radiator, heat will be given off from the coolant. So the radiator is serving as a heat exchanger. Now there are different types of radiators. For example, this one is a 
vertical flow or downflow type radiator. Here we have the upper tank that is connected to the upper hose coming from the engine block. Here is the upper hose. So hot water will be admitted to the radiator through here. Then that water will go through this upper tank and it will sweep down to the lower tank. Let's have a look at from this side. And as water travels from top to bottom, wind will be made to pass this way. Wind will be blown onto the surface of the radiator. That will remove heat from the coolant that is flowing through the radiator. It's like when, you some, when something hot touches you and uh, you feel very hot, you shake it. You shake your hand so that the heat will be taken away by the wind. That same principle is used here. So this is a downward flow type radiator. Let's have a look at another type of radiator. The other type of radiator is the horizontal flow type. For example, look at this radiator. When you look at this radiator, here we have the upper hose and here we have the lower hose. So water will be flowing from this side to this side on the upper portion to go down and then it will come back this way on the lower side. So this is a horizontal flow type radiator. The advantage of this type of radiator is that when water is passing through the radiator, it passes twice. Once when it is going from right to left and then going down through the header and coming back here. So water will be exposed to the cool air twice. So this is another type, the horizontal flow type. Well, when you look at this radiator also, it is a horizontal flow type. See it from the back. This is the upper hose coming from the cylinder head side. And there we have the lower hose. Water will be flowing this way, goes down, and then comes back. The coolant will be exposed to the incoming air twice. Once when it is going from here to here, then it will go down, then it will come this way again, and finally it will go to that lower hose. Look there. There is a lower hose. So these are the different radiator configurations. We have seen two types, the downflow, which is a vertical flow type, and right here we are looking at the horizontal flow type. Well, let's have a look at how it is constructed internally. This is a cutaway view of a radiator. Hot water would be coming from the cylinder through this upper hose then it will be accumulated in this header tank. This is the upper tank where coolant will be accumulated. And if you watch closely, in there, there are tubes, radiator tubes extending down. Those tubes will be extending down from here extending down and coming to these lower ones. This is a sectioned lower end of the radiator. From here it goes to the lower hose. From the lower hose, it will go to the engine block. From the engine block, it will go to the water jackets. 
here are the water jackets so water coolant will be circulating around the cylinders then once the engine block cooling is done coolant will go up to the cylinder head it will come to the water jacket inside the cylinder head see there are lots of water jackets then from all those water jackets inside the cylinder head it will come to the water pump for this configuration water pump is here it will come to the water pump then from water pump it goes up to the upper hose well this is a very simple configuration where there is no thermostat where water pump is installed on the upper hose on most of the vehicles however water pump is installed on the lower hose so this is it here we have the filler neck this is where coolant will be added to the radiator so this is also a downward flow type radiator the other main component of the cooling system is the radiator cap this is the radiator cap well when you look at lightly it seems that this is here to cover only the filler neck but the function goes beyond that this is a spring loaded check valve I can say that is used to maintain the cooling system pressure well when you look at closely the cooling system will be maintained at this pressure see here it says 0 0.9 so the cooling system will be maintained at 0 0.9 bar increasing the cooling system pressure will increase the boiling point so that coolant will be very difficult to boil if the cooling system is pressurized the idea is when temperature is increasing inside the cooling system so does the pressure the pressure will increase and act on this valve this is a spring loaded valve see the spring loaded valve and only when it reaches this bar pressure will it open and flow to the expansion tank otherwise the cooling system will be closed so the radiator cap is there to pressurize the cooling system it will maintain the cooling system pressure when the pressure is excess when the pressure exceeds the preset amount it will open this valve this valve will be open from this neck initially it was sitting on there and when the pressure exits exceeds the preset amount it will come up and overflow to the expansion tank on some radiators it will flow directly to the ground and the other function of the radiator cap is to fill the cooling system when the cooling system starts to cool down. When, it start, when the cooling system starts to cool down, it has to admit in either air or coolant. That is also allowed by the radiator cap. So the radiator cap has two valves. There is a pressure valve and there is a vacuum valve. When vacuum is created inside the cooling system, it will open a passage allowing either air or water to be admitted into the cooling system. When pressure increases, however, the pressure valve will open and excess fluid, excess coolant, expanding coolant will be discharged from the cooling system. So this is the function of the radiator cap. And the other component of the cooling system is the cooling fan. Here you can see the cooling fan. The purpose of the cooling fan is to pull air through the radiator. So when engine is started, for example, this is a mechanical type cooling fan. It is driven by the crankshaft. So when it is built driven by the crankshaft, it will pull air from out to inside on engines of vehicle engines air will be sucked from outside to the inside so that way the cooling fan will draw in air through the radiator well there are different types of cooling fans as you can see this is a mechanical type cooling fan there are also other types electrical types here you can see an electrical fan 
This electrical fan is powered by battery voltage. So once the engine is turned on, it will be powered by electricity once the cooling system attains its operating temperature. Well, when it comes to these electrical fans, they are usually operated by a temperature switch, which is located right here. See, this is a temperature sensing switch. So when the coolant temperature reaches some value, it will turn on the cooling fan. By preventing the cooling fan from rotating at low temperature, we will make sure that the engine operating temperature will be attained as fast as possible. So this type of electric fans, when they are operated by an electric switch of that kind, a heat sensing switch of that kind, they can be started at any time. So whenever working on an electric fan, make sure to disconnect the power supply because due to that temperature switch, the fan can be started at any time. So there are, these are the types of fans. They are electric driven ones and they are mechanically driven ones. Well, the other component of the cooling system is the shroud. Here we have a shroud. The main function of the shroud is to direct airflow. For example, when this fan is rotated, when engine is started and this mechanical fan starts turning, the wind that is produced by the fan should be directed to the radiator. That is done by the shroud. So the shroud is there to effectively utilize the air flow that is generated by the cooling fan. So it will direct and uh, make sure that almost the majority of the air that is being driven by the fan will make it through the radiator. That is the purpose of the shroud. The other component of the cooling system is the hose. Well, we have two hoses here. For example, this is the upper hose through which hot is taken out from the cylinder head, goes to the radiator, cools down, and comes back to the engine through the lower hose. This is the lower hose. It comes in this way and then go into the cylinder. In order to ensure complete circulation of the coolant through the cooling system, liquid cooling systems are usually supplied by water pump. Right here you see a water pump pumping coolant from the engine to the radiator. It will make sure that water passes through the radiator and then, once it comes back through the lower hose, it circulates through the water jacket. These are the water jackets through which coolant is circulating. So the entire coolant circulation is maintained by the water pump. Hot water will be up, goes to the radiator, cools down, come through the lower hose, go to the engine block, pass to the cylinder head, goes to the radiator, and that circuit will remain in a loop. That complete circulation is maintained by the water pump. And the other component of the cooling system, which is hidden under here, is the thermostat. The thermostat is a device that is operated by coolant temperature and allows engine water circulation to the radiator only when operating temperature is attained. It is operated by a temperature sensitive wax. So when the engine operating temperature is reached, water coolant can flow from the block, pass through the thermostat, and then goes to the radiator. Comes back through the lower hose and go into the coolant water pump. But when the thermostat is closed, instead of going to the radiator, 
the coolant will come from the engine it will be bypassed by this bypass circuit and go back to the lower hose circuit again so this way it will keep the water from entering to the radiator so that the engine operating temperature can be attained as soon as possible previously when we discussed about the purpose of the cooling system one function of the cooling system is to assist the engine to attain its operating temperature as fast as possible that is done by the thermostat so the thermostat will be opened only when operating temperature is reached beyond that it will pass water to the radiator but below the operating temperature this line passage will be closed water will circulate only through the engine it will come from the pump goes to the block comes to the cylinder head comes out and bypassed again it will circulate in this manner but when the operating temperature reaches and uh, the thermostat opens the passage water will go to the radiator flow through the radiator comes back through the lower hose and comes up to the block and that way water circulation will be achieved so this is the function of the thermostat if you want to see the detailed construction of a thermostat please go to a video about uh, a changing water thermostat on a Toyota Yaris link is in the description below and the other very crucial water system cooling system component is the water temperature sensor right here we have a water temperature sensor that is used to display the coolant condition the engine temperature condition to the driver so this is connected to a display panel inside the dashboard that will tell the status of the cooling system temperature so these are some of the components and the main functions of the cooling system i hope you have enjoyed and learned something about the cooling system if you like this video please smash the like button if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video till then stay safe